It kind of feels like we're in 2012 again when social media is trying to find its footing and there are about 12 apps that will die out within a month and Gary V is getting on every single one of them. And why is that? Well, it's because when there's blood in the water, the sharks of social media startups go nuts. They go feral and they chomp at the bits for your and my attention. <laughs> How many apps do we need? I don't I don't use I, I don't use Tink Tonk. No one uses Snapchat anymore. I don't know why. There's such good content on there. Oh. Oh, good job, Kenyan. I mean, I guess the main ones people use are YouTube, if you want to consider that a social media. I don't know, do you consider YouTube a social media? Because I've heard people say it is and it isn't, and I'm not really sure which one. I'm kind of indifferent on it. The main ones we use are YouTube, Instagram, no one uses Facebook anymore. So it's like Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Those, I would say, are the big three of at least people who are my age. And I'm 25. And lately, Twitter has been shooting itself in the foot several times. And we all kind of saw it coming from when Elon mistakenly bought Twitter for like 46 billion dollars and it was definitely overvaluated the price and then Twitter's just bleeding money so Elon is grasping at every small chance he can get to monetize the platform further just driving people away and making people mad at him and the platform we had the introduction of Twitter blue <laughs> where he took away everyone's legitimate verification I made a video on verification if you want to see it and now the only way you can get a verification badge is not if you're a notable figure or a business no it's if you pay Elon eight dollars a month uh, yeah, to read some tweets, which kind of caused everyone to rightfully clown on the people who actually paid $8 a month to get a little badge and be boosted up in the replies. And now every time you click on a Twitter reply, it's just a bunch of check marks saying some dumb shit that isn't even interesting. Before this, it was actually interesting to go into the replies and see what the top comments were. Now we don't really get that and it's just a bunch of baloney. I just thought of... Have you guys ever had fried bologna? That was something I used to eat as a kid and then I stopped eating like that type of meat. Now I only really eat like poultry and fish. That's besides the point. I just thought of like fried bologna and I'm kind of craving it and I feel bad. Anyway, that was just one of the things that Twitter did to start their fall from grace. If there ever was a grace on Twitter. Guys, you know the deal. If you're a lover of Raid Shadow Legends, I mean, who isn't? I wanted to let you know that they came out with an animated limited series called Raid Call of the Arbiter, and it slaps. If you've been here a while, you know that I love my animes and any animated series I just love checking out, so this was right up my alley. I really like the art style and the soundtrack is really beautiful. I think it really adds to the lore of the game. It's pretty cool and you can watch it right in the game for free. And new episodes come out every Thursday at 10 a.m. EST until July 20th. Raid is also releasing lore videos and behind the scenes content on YouTube, which I think just pairs really well with the series. It's really cool. So if you log into Raid Shadow Legends for seven days between now and July 24th, you'll get a chance to get Artak, one of the five new characters from the show as a playable legendary champion for free. But I think he has his arm back in this one. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, use the link in my description or scan the QR code on the screen to get insane bonuses like Epic Champion Drake and other useful things. Thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video and back to the video. The latest hoop of Twitter is that you may have logged on to see this rate limit exceeded. I just thought Twitter was down when I logged on and saw that. Uh, but no, this was a purposeful change by Elon Musk to prevent data scraping, or at least to limit data scraping. So this article from Reuters, yes, Reuters, I know now that it's not routers. Thank you for the like 100 plus copy paste comments. Don't worry, I saw all of them. Anyway, Reuters says, Elon Musk's Twitter has put a temporary limit on the number of tweets that users can see each day. <laughs> so it was put in place that if you logged on Twitter and you weren't verified, you didn't want to pay eight dollars a month. You could only see 600 tweets a day This isn't like if you post 600 tweets a day if you reply or engage or click on 600 tweets a day No, this is when you're scrolling you can only see 600 tweets a day. Do you know how fast it might seem like a lot to some people but if you're scrolling that's like two minutes of scrolling and like sure 
But that's probably a good thing. We shouldn't be on Twitter that long. I personally have a 15 minute Twitter limit on my screen time app. <laughs> but regardless, this is such a silly change to prevent data scraping because you are literally preventing people from using the app. Like it's crazy that the solution to data scraping is to literally kill how much time people can spend on your app before the app becomes unusable. It is crazy. Because like obviously the purpose of social media apps is to keep you on there. And by Elon saying, no, you can't, it just like literally kills the app. Not to mention advertisers aren't gonna want to advertise when people can't see any tweets anymore and it completely limits advertising reach. So if you're trying to make money, Elon, is this really the best way? He did say that this was a temporary change, but I'm not really sure how this is going to solve the problem long term or like what step after this is going to help the platform. Another change that's probably less significant is that users now can't view tweets without logging into the platform. I wouldn't say this is something super new. I think Facebook does this, LinkedIn does this, and now Twitter is doing it. And it's, you know, it's a little bit of a hassle to make a new account, but I'm sure people who want to go on Twitter, they will. I think that is a better solution to prevent like AI and, and prevent automated systems from like scraping a ton of data. So at first it was verified users who are paying $8 a month can read 6,000 posts a day, unverified accounts, which is the vast majority of us, can read 600 posts a day, and new unverified accounts can read 300 posts a day. Of course, like every bad decision from Elon, he keeps backtracking, so he kept increasing the limit until it was like 10,000 for verified, 1,000 for unverified, and 500 for new unverified. But this, th it's not the point. That's not the point. The point is, is that now alternatives for Twitter are not only popping up more than ever, like we already had some, like Blue Sky, which was was founded by Jack Dorsey, the former CEO of Twitter, and there's Mastodon, which I found really strange and confusing because it's just a bunch of separate servers and there's not really like a central hub for, for followings and followers and I find that difficult to use and that's not gonna pop off the way that they think it is. But not only are more alternatives popping up to Twitter, they're actually like getting kind of successful or at least they're seeing a bunch of users signing up these days, for now at least. And boy oh boy, the rivalry between Elon and Mark Zuckerberg is just beginning because we have threads from Instagram, made by Instagram, powered by Instagram. It's called Threads. It's an app and it's literally just an alternative to Twitter. My biggest complaint is that there is no dark mode. So that's a, a big, big design flaw there that'll probably kill the platform on its infancy. I'm just kidding, but they should add that. So apparently the light and dark mode is tied to your system settings, but you can't change it individually in the app. I've been exposed as a light mode user, goodbye. Apparently it's been rolled out in more than a hundred countries and I was kind of hearing about it. I was like seeing some of my friends signing up for it and I was like, who gives a shit? What, I don't, I'm not, I'm not gonna sign up for another f***ing app, okay? If Twitter was dying, I was just gonna be okay with not having Twitter in my life and I wasn't really looking for a replacement but of course the more I learned about it the more I was dumbfounded I was what are some other words I was astonished, astounded, amazed, startled. I was stupefied even, or nonplussed. Because Threads, well, I didn't know it was like run by Instagram before, but Threads has seen over 30 million people sign up for it in in like just over a day. In a day, <laughs> that's crazy. And it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, everyone who has an Instagram account automatically has a thread, so that way the numbers are, are inflated. No, these are people who are like, like genuinely signing up for threads. Uh, but a big way that they pushed this, interestingly enough, they got a bunch of celebrities to sign up for the early access to threads, like Gordon Ramsay, I love him, Netflix, my favorite celebrity, and Jennifer Lopez are just some of the big names that got early access to threads, according to The Verge. <laughs> so obviously that's a strategy that's going to help a social media start to flourish, especially with a big name like Meta or Facebook behind it. Unfortunately, our eyes are going to have to see threads from Usher on the main page, even if none of us follow him. Uh, am I going viral yet? No, Usher, you're not. I'm sorry. We do share a birthday, though. This article, I really liked this headline. It says, Meta's version of Twitter is just the comments section from Instagram. I'd, I'd have to agree so far. Something that's missing from Twitter onto threads is the amount of, like, brain-dead opinions on things that shouldn't be controversial. So luckily, the chronically online Twitter users haven't found their way onto threads yet. For now, I've seen a plethora of just dad jokes. 
I don't know if it's just because of the people I follow, but the content I've been seeing on there is just posting, and and we know that I value a platform that you can properly post on. So that's a, that's a plus from me. Now, I know this kind of seems like the type of app that is just gonna die out in a few weeks or something, like be real and lemon eight, God, the prospects were wrong on that one. So much for that big marketing push in May, huh? And allegedly they're gonna make a big marketing push in May, so we'll see. But I wanna talk about why I think Threads is a little different and why this one isn't really going to die out if it's successful. Obviously, if it's successful, it's not gonna die out, duh. The point is, I think Threads has less of a chance to die out. Even like overpowering fucking blue sky that Jack Dorsey himself made, the, the creator of Twitter himself, I don't think his new app is gonna cut it. Instagram loves stealing shit and sometimes they like stealing it well, or at least good enough. Like they stole stories literally from Snapchat. I don't know if you guys even remember that. But that was Snapchat's thing. And now Snapchat's dead. Not in India, but it's it's dead kind of here in our generation. <laughs> Snapchat's kind of become this app that like the kid from your hometown who never left after high school still uses to hit up high school girls. That's kind of the reputation that Snapchat has these days, but they stole stories and became infinitely more popular. They stole TikToks and making a reels is actually horrible and a horrible experience. And the creator on there is awful, it's clunky and the audio like never syncs up. It's a terrible process, but either way, reels themselves are actually very, very successful, which is wild, but they stole those two things and the only piece of the Triforce left to complete the theft that Meta loves to conduct is from Twitter. I think Mark Zuckerberg's just been like very clear that he wants Meta to become like the all-in-one, everyone only uses his app. He really wants to like become the dictator of social media and I get it because that means more money. That's just how it works and this is no exception. So with Twitter literally failing, of course it's time for Meta to be like, let's launch this shit, baby. Fuck you, Elon. And honestly, I think they're doing a good job. Crazy. I never thought I would say that. Number one, the integration between threads and Instagram is actually good. It's wild. Like, they knew that for someone to use a new social media, it's really hard to get that that organic user base, like, from scratch, from zero. It's really hard when a social media app relies on a user base being big and triumphant. A lot of people need to be using it at once, which is why a lot of battle royales fail, a lot of social medias fail, because they struggle to find that footing to get those base users that will stay on and use the app. If no one's on it, why would I use it? That's it's kind of like the catch. I'm not gonna be the one of the users who uses it. A lot of people need to be using it at once. And Threads has been integrating that really well because they absolutely know that fact. So when you sign up for Threads, you have the option to follow everyone that you already follow on Instagram. Starting a new social media, annoying. If I can just copy paste over from Instagram, yeah, I'm gonna do that. And you know what else that does? That gives me and other people a base following as well. So they're not tweeting into nothing to no one. They already have have that base followership from Instagram. Like this integration is key and is going to be key. And when you have a thread that you wanna share on Instagram stories or a post, it is easily clickable. So it just takes you right into Threads app with like almost no wait time, no weird loading time. It doesn't take you to the Google Chrome browser to make you open in app. No, it just takes you right there. Obviously assuming you have the Threads app downloaded, but I'm sure that process is. Regardless, the integration is, is doing very well where it's easily shareable to Instagram easily clickable so it's great that like people don't have to keep following the accounts that they already follow somewhere else and people who sign up already get that follower base that they had from somewhere else it's just easy setup it's easy integration I had to do like no work to set it up I could import my bio and profile picture from Instagram if anything they took most of the pains from having a new social media into the world and eased like all of those pain points for people to sign up which is a little scary at how good they are at it so far Everything that you can do on Twitter, mostly you can do on here. Besides like bookmarking things and DMing people, uh, but maybe that's a good thing. Although Meta has joined the Twitter Meta, <laughs> where you have to pay for verification now. And I'm pretty sure that that's rolled over from Instagram to threads as well. So if you're verified on Instagram, I'm pretty sure you're verified on threads too in that same process. 
But don't you worry because the Zuckerberg Musk rivalry that I mentioned earlier, I wasn't fucking kidding. <laughs> Apparently, Zuckerberg and Musk are planning to fight in a cage match hosted by Dana White. No, I am not making this up, although it sounds made up, and I just like had to talk about it because what the fuck is going on? <laughs> We've gone from influencer boxing matches to nerds that want to fight in the cafeteria planning, fight me, me after school so I can beat you up. That's the kind of vibe that I'm getting from this. We even have some trash talk, also uh, reported from Reuters, f Reuters, Reuters. Zuckerberg noted the challenges that big public social media forums bring. I think there should be a public conversations app with 1 billion plus people on it. Twitter has had the opportunity to do this, but hasn't nailed it. Hopefully, we will. Woo, baby. Oh, I can feel the heat from here, Zucky Wucky. <laughs> so apparently this rivalry has been happening on Twitter for like a little bit now, where Zuckerberg was talking about threads, but like undercover, he was kind of like, oh, we're gonna launch a rival to Twitter soon. And then Elon replied, I'm up for a cage match if he is, lol. To which Zuckerberg responded with, send me location, <laughs> post on Instagram. Now that both sides are in active negotiations over a fight that is slated to be an exhibition match produced by the UFC president Dana White. Uh, probably the best headline to come out of this is Italy denies offering the Coliseum for Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg, but would only agree on one condition. Because Elon tweeted, some chance fight happens in Coliseum. That would be awesome, to be honest. That that sounds like I would participate in the plot for 80 for Brady, where a bunch of old ladies are traveling to go see the Super Bowl and sneak in. I would fly to Italy to watch Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg battle it out like gladiator style in the fucking Coliseum. That's kind of like a once in a lifetime opportunity. I guess here I will practice my uh, pregame interview uh, reporting skills. You know, if something in the future comes up, um, creator clash if you need pre and post game interviews. I'm, I'm here for that. So we have a 13 year age difference, apparently a 24 pound weight difference. And according to Dana White, he's like been on the phone with both of them. On Tuesday, he said he was on the phone with those two until 1245 in the morning. He added, they both want to do it. A little bit on Mark Zuckerberg's background history on, on fighting. You might not think that he fights, but after this pick of his gosh darn rock hard glutes, it's hard to deny that the man does some work Working out. Zuckerberg has been training in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, which is so wild to me to imagine him doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But in May, he competed in his first public martial arts tournament in California, which he attended undercover up until the moment he took off his hat and sunglasses to fight. And he won gold and silver medals in this challenge. Dude, it sounds like a goddamn movie where he gets up in the middle of the ring, takes off his disguise and the crowd goes wild and he absolutely kills it. On the other hand, on the other side of the ring in the blue corner, we have Mr. Musk, who has tweeted that he almost never works out, and once suffered a back injury that required surgery after participating in an exhibition match against a sumo wrestler. <laughs> what are you doing? What do billionaires do? Is this what they do? Musk made it very clear, I'm not going to lose any weight. Sounds like a good matchup to me, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, if any new social media app has the potential to have longevity, it's gonna be threads, to be honest. Although we'll see, maybe we'll just come crawling back to Twitter. I remember when stories came out on Instagram and everyone was like, yeah, this shit isn't gonna work. You just stole this from Snapchat. No one's gonna use it. And now everyone uses it. So I think once Threads introduces dark mode, it's over. It's over for Twitter. Maybe eventually Twitter will just be the hub for like Elon fanboys and they'll just bleed money till they shut down just like Vine. Maybe they'll follow in their footsteps since they were related anyway. Well, that's the tea, I guess. Oh yeah, if you're wondering what the f my shirt is, I'm I'm forklift certified according to this shirt. Uh, just in case you were curious, because I know when I'm sitting down, it's just this, and this is really confusing. So that's all. Thank you to my patrons, and thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video. I am a real YouTuber now that I've been sponsored by Raid. It's almost like a, a rite of passage. I, I love this. It was great. They were great to work with. What can I say? So yeah, follow me on Instagram, follow me on threads, I guess, and do not follow me on Twitter. Goodbye.